Hello, everybody, and welcome into my latest live broadcast. It's the 15th of June, 2023. It's Thursday. That means it's almost Friday. See how smart I am? We always have a fun show on Friday, always live Friday at 1 o'clock Pacific time. I hope you will tune in and put it on your calendar every single Friday, 1 o'clock right here. We're doing something live. Computer builds, mini PCs, upgrades, repairs. Who knows? It's always a roll of the dice. Welcome in. It's Thursday. Did I say that? I think I said that already. Well, it's still Thursday, but stick around. It'll change soon enough. Today, I've got a mini PC review for you. This is from a company called Chewy, C-H-U-W-I. Um, this is called the Lark Box X, and we're going to take a look at it today in depth. My reviews are always live, unscripted, unrehearsed, and I like to interact with the live chat room. Find me another tech channel that does that, and I'll subscribe to them. Hello to our good friend Buster. Peter Laycock contributes 10 pounds in the super chat. He says, good evening, Carrie and Marlena and everyone in the chat. All the best. From Bonnie, Scotland, where the temperature in Edinburgh is 67 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 19 degrees Celsius. Oh, man, I wish we had that. We're over 100 degrees right now, I'm pretty sure. Is it? Oh, well, it's getting there. We're at 90... It's still early. The temp's still going up. We're at 93 degrees Fahrenheit here in Phoenix. And the temp will rise up in for another three or four hours. So we'll be over 100 today. <clears throat> Better get used to it because it's going to be getting hotter as we enter into late June and July. And then it gets super miserable in August with high humidity and high temperatures. That kind of wanes in September a little bit. and Things start to cool off in October. But by then... I will be in Michigan cooling off in the fall weather in Michigan like I like to do every year. So uh, in the meantime, I guess summer is here, huh? All right. Uh, let me say thank you to Peter Laycock also for his very generous Amazon gift card sent uh, late last night. Thank you so much. You're, you're an amazing guy. I don't, I don't even know what to say. It's uh, incredible. Frankie B, speaking of amazing guys, Frankie B contributed $19.99 in Super Chat before the show began. He goes, here's a little something to help you out. I'm working. I may not be able to watch. That's all good, Frankie. I won't take it personally, but thank you for supporting the channel um, as you have for such a long time. And I'm sure you will watch the replay. Well, I hope you will. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are we doing here in the chat room? Mark Baggett says hello. Chris Johnson says hello. Ray Sudbury and uh, our good friend Mark Gaines and Bob R. and Chris Smith and Dwayne Blackwilder and Desmond Javin and Fred Adcock and Sarge Tech all say hello. Hello, everybody. There's Ron Barnish and Jamie McGregor and Patrick Russa and Joe Carender and somebody named Construction and R2 Resenin and Captain Blinsky. There's Pete Tracker 34 and Michael Mariello. Hello as well to Ben Laird joining us from Scotland, George Ferugia, and Thomas McT, Garfield Rupe, Alvin Shaver, Alash Depege, our good friend Luke Graney watching uh, Luke Greenia watching us from Vermont, the Green Mountain State. Gary Tatum says hello. William Dawson says hello. Paul O'Brien says hello. Captain Fandom Nerd says hello. Welcome in, everybody. There's Jim Barksdale, Eric Lopez, Dustin Fuller, Keith Landers. Welcome in, my friends. Are we ready for a show? Paul O'Brien contributes five euro. He says, here's towards a Xanax to help you chill out. <laughs> Stress for evening. No, no, we got to keep the energy up during the show. Maybe the Xanax is for later. I think Xanax costs more like $300, $400 per bottle. And there's 30 pills in a bottle. I don't know what that works out to, but... Uh, I've heard getting off of that stuff could kill you. Seriously, you can die if you just stop taking it. So I think I won't start. But if you don't mind, I'll use your contribution towards buying things we can review and fix and show off on the channel. So thank you for supporting the channel. All right. Um, Chewy, here's what the box looks like. I'm going to bring it up to the camera because unlike uh, other some other mini PC manufacturers that just put their PCs in a generic box with no name on it. 
Uh, Chewy obviously has their own box, and it tells us what's inside the box. Now that's pretty normal. Uh, when we get a mini PC that's like in a generic box, it just says mini PC with no manufacturer name and no, <laughs> no listing of, you know, what's in it, what's the processor, how much RAM, how much storage. I think it's okay to judge a manufacturer based on that, I, you know, to understand what kind of support you're likely going to get. So <clears throat> I could be wrong, but I'm a little judgmental that way. I, I like to see a manufacturer name on the box, and I like to see some indication of what's inside the box. I shouldn't have to get out a Sharpie marker and write on the box so I know what, <laughs> one box from another. So we're off to a good start with this uh, new model Chewy here, the Lark Box X. Look how nicely it's packed. Now, before I open this, I'm going to jump over here to Amazon and I'm going to pull up the Lark Box X page so we can take a look at uh, what the specifications are. This is a sub $200 budget mini PC. All right, so we're going to start with that. Much like regular PCs, there are different tiers. There's uh, entry level, mid range, high end, desktop and enthusiast. And the price about doubles from one range to the next. So from 200 to 400 to 800 to, you know, I, I don't want to say 1600, but you can absolutely get there. And even more than that, depending on just how much you want, how much you can afford. And of course, the more you spend, the more you get. But that doesn't mean that there's not value to be found in each tier. Is the Larkbox X a value at this tier? I don't know. Let's find out together. We'll take a look at how it is advertised here on Amazon. The link for the Larkbox X is in the video notes below this video, as is the link for Amazon as well. If you use that link, I make a small commission. You don't pay anymore. I don't even know who you are. I just know that it was purchased and that Amazon owes me a commission, the date and the time it was purchased. And it's a nice way to support the channel. Even if you use that link to check out this PC and you don't buy it, but you're at Amazon anyway, so you thought you'd pick up a couple other unrelated items. Because my link took you to Amazon, I still make the commission on anything you buy. It's a little teeny tiny commission, but trust me, if enough of you do it, it adds up and can pay me more than what I make from YouTube. And that's not really a high bar anyway. So uh, just something to bear in mind. I think I'm legally obligated to tell you that I make money from the Amazon link, but that should be really obvious to everybody that I'm certainly not keeping it a secret. All right, so just so we're clear on that, let me go over to my window capture here on OBS and let me turn off the camera. There we go. So here we have the Chewy Larkbox X Mini PC. It's an Intel Alder Lake N100. We're seeing a lot of these N100s. Intel, uh, Intel's branding always changes. You know, we had 286, 386, 486, and then Pentium, and then Celeron, and then Core Duo, and then Core 2 Duo, and then we went with the i, like the i3, the i5, the i7. Well, now Intel's dropping the i, just so you know, here's what's coming. Now it's going to be Intel Ultra 3, Ultra 5. It's instead of I, it's Ultra. I think by adding four more letters, they're implying you're getting more for your money. I don't know. It's marketing. It's all psychological nonsense. But <clears throat> the N100 is basically a rename of the Celeron processor. But these aren't your father's Celerons. These are fairly powerful little processors, considering we're at a sub $200 range here. Look, this thing will go up to 4.1 gigahertz. This is an entry level computer. You understand? Entry level. I don't think it's possible to get a seller on any faster than this. So that means right out of the box, they've already cranked it to 11. So there's nothing for you to, to, uh, to optimize. There's no, nothing for you to change in a BIOS. You cannot get it any faster than this. They have already done that for you. That's pretty unusual. It's going to come with Windows 11. 120, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> that didn't sound right at all. 12 gigs of RAM, that's an odd number, but uh, eight is more or less the standard, and 16 is probably more than most people 
uh, use on a machine like this. So I understand 12 is kind of the happy middle there. So you're not paying for eight. Uh, actually, you're, you're paying for eight, but you're not paying for 16, but you're paying for eight and you're getting 12. I think that's, that's a pretty good deal. 512 gig solid state storage. I think that's a SATA drive. So we're probably only getting like 540 megabytes per second. But the benefit of that is we're not gonna run into any overheating issues with a SATA drive, okay? And there's no real benefit to having NVMe on an entry level machine. Honestly, it's kind of a waste of money. But uh, let's see, Vega 10 graphics, that's gotta be built into the processor. That's internal graphics. It's got dual ethernet. I think the Ethernet ports on this, let's see if we scroll through these photos. Yeah, one Ethernet port is 2.5 gig and the other Ethernet port is 1 gig. Isn't that weird? Weird. Um, usually you get matching ports. On the back, you'll see we've got two USB 3.0s, two HDMI 2.0s. No, I'm sorry, one HDMI 2.0 and one display port for a total of two video outputs. And on the front of the unit, we have two more USB 3.0s up front. We've got a USB type C. Why does it say Ryzen on the front? I'm very confused. N100 is, I don't think this picture goes with, uh, wait, what's happening right now? USB-C, it says. All right, so that can be used as a video output. So you can have three monitors hooked up to this at the same time at 4K 60 hertz. Okay, so that's pretty powerful for an entry-level box. I want to remind people who don't normally watch my channel how much Windows 11 costs. If we go to Microsoft and we say Windows 11 Pro Microsoft buy should take us to the microsoft store microsoft's online store and let's see how much does microsoft want to download see no shipping you're going to download it oh i'm in the wrong website hold on i think it's the next one down microsoft should be here in the store Buy and download Windows, 10, Windows 11 Pro. So if you go to Microsoft and you buy Windows 11 Pro, well, you will download it. You're, you're not, they're not mailing you anything, just a download. They're going to charge you $199.99. But what if I told you for that same $199.99, you'll get Windows 11 along with a little case, a little motherboard, a little power supply, a little CPU, a little CPU cooler, a little RAM, a little storage, Ethernet, sound card, USB ports. Come on. This is a no-brainer, right? You got Wi-Fi on here. Bluetooth is only 4.2. That's kind of old. 5.3, I think, is current. But... Let's keep our expectations in line with how much we're paying. The more you pay, the more you get. Don't think you're going to pay $200 and get yourself an i9 processor and 64 gigs of RAM. I got news for you. Uh, you're going to be disappointed <laughs> unless you're buying stolen property. Um, this may have Windows 11 Home on it, which is a little cheaper than Windows 11 Pro, but I'm not sure. We're going to open it up. We're going to find out right now. So let me go back over to camera one. Here I am. Okay. All right. Let me go back over to the chat room two and bring OBS up on top of that. It's just a whole juggling of screens I do over here. And of course, I've got the chat room right over here on the tablet so I can see what everybody's saying. That's what that looks like. I'll put that right there in case you're wondering what the heck is that. All right. Full disclosure. Everything's full disclosure, including... Chewy sent me this computer for free in exchange for a review. There's no contract. There's no money exchanging hands. There's, I'm not obligated to give this a glowing review. I'm only uh, giving them my word that I will review it honestly in a timely manner. And that's just a gentleman's agreement. And I hope they enjoy the review. I hope I enjoy their product. Let's get started. So when we do the unboxing, 
I don't think I've ever had this out of the box before. So we've got documentation, I guess. Got a warranty card, product inspection report. Um, I'm not sure what this is for. It just says Chewy. This is different Chewy. And then documentation kind of looks like this. In multiple languages. All right. Very good. Very good. And I don't really have any interest in any of this. So I'm just going to put all that back where it went, where it was. And we'll get to the good stuff. LH says the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 3700U. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're not getting a Ryzen 7 at that price. <clears throat> there must be some other conversation that happened before. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're talking about what was in the photo. This is an N100. The N100 is an Intel product. So let's see. What do we got in the box? We've got this box here. Oh, check this out. We've got an Oreo cookie in here. Is this this is the part? It's not Oreo. All right, I'm going to bring this up to the camera and I'm going to show it to you. Uh, the sticker on this one does not match the sticker that I just showed you at Amazon. Um, clearly, there's everything else matches though. Two USB threes or USB Type C that does video output. Uh, no power on the USB C. Power button over here. Let's see, what do we have here? Nothing, nothing. And looking on the back, yes, all that matches. There's your barrel power connector, a 2.5 gig, one gig HDMI display port and two more USB threes. And then you're venting for the fan. All right, pretty straightforward. On the bottom, no Visa mount back here. So I guess you're not going to be mounting this on the back of a monitor. But that's okay. I don't do that anyway, so. No visa mounting. All right, let's see what's in the box. We get... Bag. Okay, this is all you get. Just these two things. All right. Hey, look. Keeps the price down. I'm good with that. Because all that other stuff would go, probably leave it in the box and it'll never get used. All right, let's just put this back. That went that way, right? With the little cutout so that the documentation goes right in there. Nice presentation. Give them that. All right, here we go. Al Hesh said, so the info on Amazon is wrong. Well, I can guarantee you, you're not getting a Ryzen 7 for $200. That's not going to, that should be pretty obvious, right? Clearly, um, it's an N100 processor. So I, I'm not sure what info you're seeing on Amazon, but the, the description is correct. It's just that one particular photo uh, is a wrong photo. That's, unless you're seeing something else. And of course, uh, people make mistakes. Uh, I'll bring it to their attention. All right, so let's see. We're going to plug in power. I need a keyboard and a mouse, which I have right over here, of course. I'll just plug in my dongle right up front. And we'll turn power on. And uh, let's see, we're going to come around here to HDMI. HDMI. Here we go. And we will plug that in to the HDMI port. I'm going to leave the internet unplugged while we do our first time setup on this. Ah, what are you guys talking about in the chat? Conspiracy theories? 
Terrell Cochran says, I bet it has AMD graphics. Well, given that the Intel CPU has integrated graphics on it, it would be redundant and expensive if what we're trying to do is introduce a budget PC and we're trying to get the price down. Why would we add a redundant graphics card from an opposing manufacturer at added cost that doesn't offer any more value? So I'll take that bet. I'm going to bet you it doesn't have AMD graphics. I bet you it's got Intel graphics. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it does have Intel. Uh, maybe it does have, because it said something about, something about the graphics, didn't it? Maybe you're right. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me, but wouldn't be the first time. Let's find out. This is why I do these reviews, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly why I do them, because there can be confusion. There can be mistakes people make. There can be... Uh, language barriers, because these all are coming from China and Hong Kong, and uh, sometimes the translators, they're not speaking quite often English on a regular basis, and sometimes they, they don't get the translation quite right. So that's, that could be it as well. Nick Poverman said, the description on Amazon, if you go down further, says it's an AMD computer. So again, I want to remind you guys what often happens are these mini PC manufacturers. In fact, any sort of system integrator, they will copy and paste the, what they've already written from another machine that's similar. And that way they don't have to write it all over again. It's already been written. But what they're supposed to do is proofread it and make the changes. And apparently, I don't think they did that. So let's fire this up and let's see what it does, okay? Let's, let's take the, the conspiracy and the imagination and the wonderment and let's just get right to the straight dope, as they say in the 70s. So I'm going to hit the power... Well, wait, before I hit the power button, I'm going to move the camera up here to the corner, all right? Because I want you to see how long this takes to boot. Although we shouldn't really judge its first boot because uh, we still have setup to do. All right, so let me turn on HDMI input. Now we get the rainbow screen over there. Here we go. Power on. And now we wait and see what happens. Chewy. It's loading. Just a moment. Just a moment. Sorry, I have office space on the brain. Just a moment. Nick Poverman says, I find this very sketchy. Yeah, well, you know, anytime you're going to get a really good price on something, you're probably going to find it sketchy. I mean, that just kind of comes with the territory, doesn't it? If it seems like you're getting a lot for your money, regardless, wouldn't that seem sketchy all by itself? Never mind everything else. How are they able to sell you the Windows 11 operating system so cheaply combined with all this hardware? All right, we're going to go through our first time setup here. So let's try this. English, yes. Sketchy doesn't mean it's bad. I just want to clarify. It just means that you're not accustomed to the process. U.S. keyboard layout, no other keyboard layout. Thank you for asking. Read to the license agreement. This is why I don't have it plugged into the internet. Now it's asking us for a local user account name, which I'll put the word user and leave the password blank. And you know me, I turn all these things off. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Showing my age. Better not get demonetized for that. All right, well, the setup was pretty easy. I'm digging it. So far, so good. We're off to the races. Paul O'Brien contributes two euro. Paul says, sent you an Amazon gift card. Oh, well, thank you, Paul. I'll, uh, let me see. Let me see. Michael Mariello sent $10 with Zelle. Right on. Thank you. I don't have anything uh, from you regarding an Amazon gift card, but sometimes that takes a few minutes. Also, make sure that you got the... Uh, the email address spelled correctly. Sorry, I needed a minute.
Okay. Yeah, do do make sure that you've got the email address spelled correctly, carrie at carrieholzman.com. And then uh, we'll just have to check back. Thank you. I appreciate it. I feel like people know my birthday is coming up, even though I've not talked about it. Hmm. I'm not too excited about this birthday. I, I'm going to be 55 years old. 55? I wasn't supposed to live this long. Well, that's still over a week away, so let's not rush to it. 55. I can move into one of those retirement communities. Paul Kitching said I was 50 yesterday. Like, does it feel like you were 50 yesterday or you literally just had a birthday yesterday? If it was your birthday, happy birthday, Paul. Everybody say happy birthday to Paul. Greg M said, I remember 55 over a decade ago. Nick Poverman said he's going to be 58 in September. See, I knew Nick and I were birds of a feather there, very close in age. Dwayne Blackwelder says a youngling. That's it. You just got to hang around older people. Then you feel younger and fatter people and you feel thinner. And balder people, and then you'll feel less bald. Oystein says, 55, well, you're older than me. That's right, Sonny. You young whippersnappers, you got it made. How old are you, Oystein? Ray Sudbury said, 55, that was 23 years ago. Yeah, I'll never say that. I'll, <laughs> unless I can speak from the grave. <laughs> Uh, who knows? I, I didn't expect to make it this far. <laughs> Nick Poverman says Gen X has to stick together. Am I right? Yeah, for sure. Luke Greenia says he's going to be 59 in November. I thought Luke Greenia was much, much younger. I, I, from just the messages that he sends and the way that he writes, I just thought he was younger. I thought he was like in his 30s. But I've never actually talked to him. Ron Barnish says he's going to be 81 in October. Right on. That's awesome. Mark Baggett said he turned 27 at the end of May. Well, happy belated birthday, Mark Baggett. Sarge Tech said he's 63. Oystein says he's 53. Oh, you're not that far behind me, Oystein. But when I was your age, I was 52. That doesn't even make any sense. All right. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to plug in the internet so we can check some things here. And we'll look at the specifications of what we got. Okay? Okay. And my internet's slow, so it doesn't matter if I plug into the 2.5 gig or if I plug into the 1 gig, because either way, <laughs> my internet isn't going to go any faster regardless. All right, let's take a look. Uh, didn't mean to click that. Come on, Carrie. Start without my data. Check this. Start without my data. Uncheck this. Confirm and start browsing. All right, got that out of the way. Start settings. Let's get the Windows update started, and then that's going to take a while. And while the updates are running, we'll take a look at the system specs and see what we actually get since the Amazon pages. It's very confusing. I'm not quite sure. It's our Intel AMD system, apparently. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, right click, go to properties. Oh, look at all the icons they throw on the desktop for us. That's nice. It's an Intel N100. Now, it's idling at 800 megahertz, but it will turbo up to 4.1, which is insane. Yes, it does have 12 gigs of RAM. 11.7 gigs is usable because 0.3 is being used by the integrated GPU in the CPU. It comes with Windows 11 Home, not Pro. It's Windows 11 Home, and it is the latest 22H2 version. Thank you, Chewy, for not making us do that big download. And look, they have manufacturer information with support contact info right down here. Really nice to see when manufacturers do that. Now, if we close this, uh, actually, let me go back. All right, so I just wanted to see what was going on with Windows updates. Let's go right click and go to the device manager. Let's see what we have for a video in here. I suspect it's an Intel. Are we placing bets, ladies and gentlemen? Anybody want to guess? It's 200 bucks. I, I'm, I'm not expecting them to have been putting a lot of add-ons. Display adapters, Intel UHD graphics. Yes, that's what comes with the N100. It's built into the processor. Do we have TPM 2.0? Is this really Windows 11 compatible? 
Well, there's a security devices item in the device manager and it shows a TPM module. So this is Windows 11 compatible. All right, well, we're off to the races here. Under network cards, what do we have? There's our Bluetooth. Oh, wow, we have Wi-Fi 6 on this. That's impressive, AX101 Intel. We have Realtek 2.5 gig Ethernet controller and a Realtek 1 gig Ethernet. So interesting that we have Intel on the Wi-Fi and Realtek on the wired. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting. Whatever it takes to keep that price down, I'm good with it. All right. Now, while I'm in here, is there anything else you guys want to know about this system? Speak now while I'm in here. Don't make me turn this car around. Well, there's got to be a way for me to change this quality to 1080 permanently. I have to keep adjusting it. If your video, if you're watching me and it ever looks blurry, it's likely because your resolution is set too low on YouTube and you click the little gear icon and then set it to 1080. Even if it's set to auto, like I've been having that happen on my uh, Fire Stick 4K, I'll be looking at YouTube shorts and they'll freeze up. I'm like, what the heck's going on? And if, you, if you're experiencing that on an Amazon Fire Stick or in any other device where you get like these weird green lines and uh, anyway, that's because the resolution is set to auto. And even if the auto is set to 1080, it still causes a problem. So if you go and change the resolution of that video that you're watching that was freezing up, change that to manually setting it to 1080, it plays perfectly fine. I know it was already set to 1080 on auto. I don't know what the heck's going on. Ask the people at Amazon what they're doing. Who knows? Ron Tomey wants to know if Windows 11 is activated. Hey, you know what? That's a good question, Ron. Let's take a look. We'll right click here and we'll go to system. And then we're gonna go right up here where it says find a setting. I'll start typing activation. I don't have to get too far. To see if Windows is activated, it says active right there. Yes, Windows 11 Home is activated. Other questions? We'll wait for this to download and install. What solid state drive is it? Oystein wants to know. Ah, another excellent question. We go over here to my computer, or this PC is what they call it these days. Welcome to 2023, Kerry. We'll right click, we'll go to properties, and we'll verify it has a 512 gig solid state drive. Under hardware, it should tell us the make. Can't read that. What does it say? Some manufacturer I never heard of before. Air disc. It's an air disc. I don't know what that is. No idea. This should be a SATA SSD though, so it's going to run about 550, 540 megabytes per second. Uh, probably very similar on the reads and writes. You definitely won't have any overheating problems with that. Uh, thank you for the question, Oystein. Chris Smith says the infamous heart has disappeared. So <laughs> that is a setting on my side, and I can only adjust it during the initial setup, the configuration of each individual video. Do you guys want the heart back, or do you want the heart gone? Let's just take a off-the-cuff poll here. It, I didn't see anybody really liking that little heart icon, so... Let me know, should it stay or should it go? <laughs> Everybody wants it gone. Ron wants to know if the RAM is soldered on. I think at this price, it's going to be. Uh, we'll open it up and take a look in a little bit. Paul O'Brien contributes two euro. He says you should have the gift card now. Hey, Paul, thanks for the reminder. I don't think one person wants the hard icon. All right, good to know, good to know. Yes, Paul O'Brien has sent an Amazon gift card for $25. He says, I hope you enjoy this Amazon gift card. Here's to say thank you for your advice last night with my RAM issue. I've talked about this uh, a lot in the past, about how a lot of people have bad RAM and they don't know they have bad RAM. So if you look in my videos, if you just type into YouTube, Kerry Holzman space RAM, you're going to see a bunch of videos 
Yeah, you might want to watch those. You might find them interesting. If you would have watched them before, you could have avoided having this problem by discovering you've had this problem all along. But nonetheless, you got there. I'm glad that uh, myself and our community were able to help you. And I want this to serve as an example to the rest of you that if you have a real problem, <laughs> not an imaginary one, our chat room was such a friendly, intelligent, helpful community that not only are you asking me, but you're asking them. And they can help you find a solution to an actual problem. But if you're imagining a problem, like what am I gonna do in October of 2025 if my computer is not Windows 11 compatible? It's way too early to be having that conversation. Ask that question in January of 2025 because a lot can change between now and then. So there's no point in talking about problems you don't have. What would happen if I did this? What would happen if I did that? Well, why don't you just do that thing and find out what are you afraid of? How else are you gonna learn? And what if the information you're being told is wrong? The best way to learn is hands-on experience. And I encourage you, if you have the ability to try something, try it. As long as you're not doing anything dangerous, it's a wonderful way to learn. And if you get yourself in trouble and you have an actual problem, come on in and ask the chat room. Ask me. We'll do our best to guide you to an answer. But man, I hate the, I hate the what, what ifs. What if there were no hypothetical situations, you know? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. But if you have a real problem, an actual real problem, I almost can guarantee we can find a solution for you. But if the problem is just your imagination, well, that's nobody here can help you. It's more something to deal with a psychiatrist. Not judging, just trying to be helpful. I'm going to go into my power plan here. Type in the word plan. Edit power plan because the screen just went to sleep and it drives me crazy. So I'm going to set this to go to sleep after three hours and never, ever do I want the computer to sleep. So we won't get that interruption ever, ever again. And uh, let's see. Sarge Tech says, I want to see what's inside. Ah, patience. We're going to get there. Bob R says, thumbs up for Chewy so far. We're off to a good start. Ron Barnish has done a little company profile on this air disc manufacturer owned by Demai Technology, established in 1999. Yeah, that still tells me nothing. No idea who that is. Kenton Morton says, hey, I found a real problem. Can we all give Carrie 300 likes? It would be awesome to see. Yeah, well, if you enjoy these videos, be sure and hit the thumbs up button. Um, And subscribe if you're not subscribed, so that way you can be made aware anytime we're going live or a new video is posted. My sister made me a really cool like and subscribe. Here it is. See? So here's what you do. So the Carrie Holzman channel, you go and hit that thumbs up under the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell to turn your notifications on so you can be alerted anytime new videos are posted. You can also set your own calendar reminder that every Friday at one o'clock Pacific time, I'm live. And for members, every Monday at one o'clock, I am live for members only. That's, that's the VIP club. So the VIP show is Mondays at one o'clock. You wanna be a VIP? Click the join button, it's $9.99 a month. Bear in mind, YouTube's keeping 30% of that. And I'm using that money to help pay for this equipment and products that I can review here on the channel to hopefully save you the heartache of uh, buying something that you're not going to like or guiding you to a product you didn't even know you wanted until I showed it to you. <laughs> That's a different problem. But I really enjoy being as sponsor-free as possible. I do have a couple of sponsors, but they're not the traditional kind of sponsorships. Uh, the folks at VIP CDK deals at self-discount windows and office keys. Uh, highly encourage you to save money and buy from them. Product keys are guaranteed to work but do activate them within 30 days because if you don't, there's no customer support after 30 days, okay? So, or it can be very difficult to get it. And that's true of anything you buy. 
trying to return anything after 30 days. Good luck. So make it easy on everybody and don't buy the keys thinking I'll use them someday. Wait until you need them. I've been working with VIP CDK deals. This October will be two years. Uh, they've been absolutely 100% solid. Everybody's got nothing but good things to say. I buy all my product keys for Office and Windows from them. Um, $15.90 for Windows 10 Pro. By the way, you can use a Windows 10 Pro key to activate Windows 11 Pro and not pay the, 11, the Windows 11 Pro key price, which is more money. It's just a little tip from your Uncle Kerry. Of course, the good folks at RoboForm, the password manager, 30% uh, off to all my viewers. If you're not using a password manager, you have no idea. It'll change your life. And then uh, who else? Instant house call for remote access. All these products, by the way, have a free trial. So you can download them, evaluate them. They don't require a credit card or any information from you. And uh, you can decide for yourself if you like it, if it fits your needs and your budget. Uh, I feel like I'm leaving one out. I hate when I do that. Shout out to Acrotus. We're going to try and work something out with Acrotus here soon and get you another discount. We try and do that once or twice a year. And I'll try and get you a full-time discount that I can add. I'm still in the process of figuring this out. Kenton Morton said, I'm about to build four computers. I'm going to be using the keys with your code. It's been amazing, and thank you. You need to save a little money because they sell a two-pack of Windows 10 keys. It doesn't save a lot. But instead of buying four Windows 10 Pro keys, you can buy two Windows 10 Pro keys that can, each one can be activated twice. So that'll get you four keys, it'll save you a couple bucks. A little tip from your Uncle Kerry, just saving more money. I'm all about saving money, but not if it's, you know, stolen or not if it's morally or ethically wrong, then no, then it's not. I'm not saving money based on that. But keeping it all uh, above board and legit, why spend more if you don't have to? All right, it's checking for updates here. So I want to go full screen and get a better look because my screen's real small. So let me go full screen on this. Checking for updates. Seems like it's been checking for updates for a while. Let's go to advanced options. <clears throat> Let's go to optional updates. What do we have here? A couple of drivers for the Intel Bluetooth and Intel network. Those are the same ones we had yesterday, too, with a different manufacturer's PC. Interesting. And I don't know if I should restart this or let it time itself out. This little graphic down here drives me crazy. So I'm going to type in uh, search permissions and history, and then scroll down where it says show search highlights. When I turn this to off, you'll see that little graphic down here. It's going to go away. Hi. Forever gone. All right, let's go ahead and restart. Uh, I got to go to this side. Update and restart. Here we go. Logrenia says, I love Acronis and Roboform. I know, right? Patrick Russo said, are you still sponsored by PC Works? Um, there hasn't been much interest in My Computer Works, which is a, a site that charges a monthly subscription for somebody to be able to call them for support on any product. Uh, our audience tends to be more do-it-yourself, and as a result, we just weren't getting much interest in My Computer Works. And while I still endorse them, you know, I still think they're a good company, I just don't think they're a good fit for the audience we have here. So that's why you're not seeing it anymore. That's a spot that I would, I, I don't want to be one of those channels that has 27 different sponsors listed. So, you know, if it's getting three sales a year from the audience, it's not worth the space it's taking up in the notes. And it's not an indication that the company is not good. It's just, it would be like if I had a, a discount to knitting supplies. I don't think many of you are going to be interested in buying knitting supplies or quilting supplies. So it doesn't make any sense if it's not a good fit for the audience. But that, that's no indication. It's not indicative that the company's not good or their product isn't good. Just so we're clear on that. 
Oystein with a zero contributes 100 Norwegian krona. We have two Oysteins in the audience, and both of them are in Norway, watching us live in Norway. Welcome, Oysteins. Thank you for that. Neil says you can always restart during updates. You can. I prefer not to because, in my opinion, it takes longer because anything that you were in the process of downloading may start over at zero again. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it picks up where it left off. But at the end of the day, you're still going to be getting all the updates anyway. Let's just get this out of the way. I'll hit continue. I'll hit skip. I don't want a Microsoft account. I'm going to hit back. Skip for now. There we go. Coming together. And we're going to go back over to Windows Update and see if it checks it correctly this time. Ricky Ricky said he's sponsored by Coca-Cola. Well, if you think sponsorship is me giving the company money, I think it's, <laughs> it's fair to say I sponsor Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola doesn't sponsor me. <laughs> Usually sponsorship means the company gives me the money. But uh, lately, I guess I'm sponsored by Gatorade because I'm giving Gatorade all my money. Now, I'm pretty sure that's me sponsoring them. Pretty sure. Garfield said, I already thumbed up this video at 7.35 a.m. He liked it before it even went live. Look at that. That's optimism, right? Thank you, Garfield. LH says, you can also use a Windows 7 Pro key to activate Windows 11. Uh, true, also Windows 8 will activate Windows 10 or 11. Windows 7 keys will activate Windows 8, 10, or 11. Windows 8 keys will activate Windows 8, 10, or 11. Windows 10 keys will activate Windows 10 or 11. Every version of Windows, starting at Windows 7, will activate every later version of Windows. Currently, as of June of 2023, this has been the case. So it's a free upgrade. You do not have to install the Windows 7 operating system to upgrade it, nor should you. You just use the key, but the key must match the version of Windows. So if it's Windows 7 Home, it will not work on a Pro version of any Windows. And if it's Windows 7 Pro, it will not work on a Home version. It has to be Pro to Pro, Home to Home, and it will only do it one time. That's it, just that once. It gets activated, it's tied to that motherboard indefinitely. So if you ever have to reinstall your operating system, you'll do so just the way I show without entering a product key. You have to make sure you enter the right home or pro version that your previous key was for, that you activated it previously. And then when you're done and hit Windows Update, it will automatically reassign that product key based on the serial number of your motherboard gets reported during Windows Update and it reactivates it. You never have to enter it again. The reason I don't talk about the Windows 7 and 8 product keys working is because they're no longer sold. In fact, you may not know this, but Windows, Microsoft stopped selling Windows 10 product keys a couple months ago. Usually, within about two years of the operating system at, uh, of getting to its end of life, Windows 10 end of life is scheduled October 14th of 2025. And this is standard par for the course um, actions that Microsoft takes. And they've done this since, I don't know, Windows XP anyway. They stopped selling the operating system. And they want to start forcing people into the next operating system so they can increase market share and improve shareholder value. Doesn't mean you have to do it. And uh, when we reach January of 2025, that means we'll have 10 and a half months left of life in Windows 10. And then this will be more common of a discussion. And it's quite possible in October of 2024, the rumor is there'll be a Windows 12. So, you know, I went from, a lot of people went from Windows 98 straight to Windows XP and skipped over Windows Millennium. A lot of people went from Windows XP, skipped over Vista, and went right to Windows 7. 
a lot of people went from Windows 7, skipped over Windows 8, went right to 10. And I think a lot of people are going to skip Windows 11 and go right to 12. That would fit the historical uh, releases that Microsoft has done. Although there's no rule that says they have to do that. But if that's what they're going to do, we should, we should expect it by now. Right? We've got a long time. We've got a long, long time. Two, two plus years is two years and so many months. I don't know. July, August, September, October. Two years and four months is a long time. A lot can change. Your PC could die between now and then. You might receive a computer from me between now and then. And that computer will likely have Windows 11 on it, and this will be a non-issue for you. Anyway. So don't freak out. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Michael Dane said he called it... <laughs> His name for Windows ME is Windows Moron Edition. Well, that explains why I liked it. I liked Windows ME. Patrick Manny said he did not do Windows ME or Vista. Neil says he hated Windows 10 when he was forced to upgrade from Windows 7, but now it's all good. Now I'm being forced to upgrade to Windows 11 and I'm getting fed up with these upgrades. Well, you know what it's like? It's like saying, uh, I'm fed up with the world evolving. I don't want to evolve anymore. Can we just stay in 1955? I mean, I don't want to. And nobody's forcing you to do anything. You can switch to Linux. You can go to the Apple platform. But I want to tell you, the internet is changing. The world we live in is changing. You know, I, I in my lifetime, saw the invention of the cassette tape and the Sony Walkman, saw the demise of eight-track tapes, the demise of vinyl, sort of the resurgence of vinyl, the, insert, the introduction of the microwave oven for the house, I've seen, look at what we've seen in our lives. And the thing is, things aren't slowing down. They're getting faster, the evolutions. When AI starts coming in, you're going to want that. You're going to want to use it. It's going to be very, very useful. It's got a downside, but you're going to need the operating system to take advantage of that. And you need to stay safe and secure. It's like saying, I don't want to upgrade my military. My country has already put all this money into the military and all this training into the soldiers. So we're done. The problem is your enemies are still upgrading their military. So they're inventing and putting money into laser-guided missiles, and you're just sharpening spears and sticks. Who do you think is going to win that war? So it doesn't benefit you to fight it. The world is changing. It's changing rapidly, and it will change with you or without you, just so you know. You can choose to see these changes as a positive thing, or you can choose to see these changes as a pain in the rear end. That's just an attitude problem, and uh, I can't help you with that. Les Stevenson said, Carrie, I see people talking about Windows 12. Yeah, that doesn't mean just because people are talking about it that it's real. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It gives people something to talk about, I guess. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many people are talking about it. It doesn't make it any more legitimate, okay? It's, a lot of people said I'm 10 feet tall, so therefore I must be 10 feet tall. I see a lot of people talking about how Carrie's actually a 12-year-old girl dressed in an old man suit. Uh, everybody can say that, but it won't change what's true. Okay? So th don't give credence because of what people are talking about. Uh, people tend to behave a lot like sheep. And... Um, most of the time they have no idea what they're talking about and they're passing that on to other people who don't know what they're talking about. And before you know it, we've got a whole big group of people all talking about something that doesn't exist or might exist, but they're talking like it does and they have concerns and anxieties and speculation over something that may never even exist. There must be something else we can do with our time that's more productive, please. Imagine guys say, I see vids about Windows 12 on YouTube. I see vids on Windows 13 and Windows 14 on YouTube. So what? I see videos about the, the most crazy nonsense. You know what it takes to make a YouTube video? It doesn't take anything but a smartphone. You don't have to know anything. You can make stuff up. You can totally say anything you want on your own YouTube video. And that's exactly what these people are doing. They've got their sources. 
and they're choosing to propagate these rumors. They're legally allowed to do that, and you can do the same thing. You can create a video. You can say Carrie Holzman's 12 feet tall. You could say Carrie Holzman is a millionaire. And then somebody could say to me, I saw a video that says you're 12 feet tall and that you're a millionaire. Oh, well, I guess it's true then, because somebody made a video. You do hear yourself, right? Anybody can make a video. There's no qualifications and there's no uh, there's as long as it's not offensive. Actually, it can be offensive to a certain point. It doesn't contain any nudity or you know violence. It, basic common sense rules. You can speculate all you want on YouTube. That doesn't mean it's any more real just because somebody made a video on it, that's preposterous. You can make a video about anything at any time on whatever you want, barring those community standards, okay? You gotta, you gotta obey community standards. Al Hatch said there's no such thing as Windows 13, there's not even a Windows 12. Windows 11 is the latest version well, there may be a Windows 12 in development at Microsoft, but Microsoft's not going to tell you that because they want you to buy what's out there. If Microsoft came out and said, we're working on Windows 12, what do you think that would do to the sales of Windows 11? So it's not in their best interest to say anything until it's ready to go. And how would you feel if you had a lot of money invested in Microsoft and they issued some stupid press release that caused your stock value to fall. How upset would you be at Microsoft? So, you know, publicly owned companies have to answer to their shareholders. They are legally obligated to answering to their shareholders, not to their customers, not to their employees. It's, that's just a side effect. Only the shareholders matter to the company. That's true of any publicly owned company they are there for the shareholders. That's it. Okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Neil says, my CPU uses 100% when watching these live streams. It's a Ryzen 3 2200. I know it's not the best. That's interesting. I, I'm assuming you're watching through Chrome, perhaps, the browser. And how much RAM does your computer have? Martin Wilbert says, happy Thursday. Still installing this big update here, so we're almost done with it. Neil says he's using Firefox. He's got 16 gigs of RAM. I'd use a different browser, Neil. That's what I would do. What will Windows 12 do that Windows 11 can't do? Well, we don't even know that there is a Windows 12. <laughs> so it's hard to answer where it's going to be different when we don't even know that it's even a thing. But I'm sure that that question will be answered. If it is a thing, they'll talk about uh, when Microsoft announces it officially, they'll talk about the differences. But yeah, if, if we go, since we're just waiting on this anyway, let me go over to my window capture. Let's go to uh, let's go to YouTube here. I'm going to show you something. Go to YouTube. Let's turn off the HDMI input, and we'll turn off camera one. Let's type in Windows 13. Okay, this is all nonsense. This is just people with nothing else better to do who enjoy seeing how gullible other people are. Here's a first look at Windows 13. Here's Windows 23. Why, I mean, why not? By the way, the same guy. They are. They are. Uh, Windows 12, concept, meaning fake, made up, not real. Concept of installation. Again, fake. When you see the word concept, it means they're making it up in their head. 
Now, Cyber CPU Tech, I like this guy. He's very knowledgeable. And he says what we know about Windows 12. I haven't watched this, but I would not be surprised if he says right out of the gate, this is a rumor. And everything we know about Windows 12 is part of the rumor. There's nothing to back this up other than whatever he names a source, if he names a source. This one at least says parody. Hallelujah. Look how many there are. Here's the problem. If you want to find something, you can probably find it. But Windows 14. Uh, whoops. Windows 14. Yep. How about Windows 15? 16. Sure, why not? Windows 16 in 2021. Here's about Windows 16 a year ago. If you can imagine it and type it in, somebody's probably made a video about it, okay? That's kind of how the internet works. It's silly, and it's important that you understand the source of where you're getting your information. So if you see people talking about Windows 12, consider the source. Is that an official source, or is it just some rando online? These are all randos. This, I don't know what this AR Windows is. I guess all this guy does is make up versions of Windows. I got scammed using this Windows concept. Well, I, if anybody deserves to get scammed, I think it's somebody who does this. Like, in their mind, they might not think they're doing anything wrong. If Microsoft designed Mac OS... So there's an argument to be made that he's, you know, being an artist and he's being creative. But this is no different than an artist painting a picture. They've got an image in their head, got a concept in their mind, and in this case, they make it into, uh, into a video. And then unfortunately, we have a, a number of... Uh, uh, ill-informed users who can't tell what's real from parody or manipulation, fake. All right, I don't know if this is parody or not. He's got 66 videos and under 8,000 subscribers, and his channel has been around since only since two years ago. So he has not been around very long. But yeah, be careful what you're looking for because you can probably find it. And that's the problem is if the internet is an echo chamber and will only show you what you want to see, well, imagine if Wikipedia worked that way. Imagine if I was looking up something, I'm um, a conservative, and the information then took that into mind and presented me the conservative version of the information. Or if I was a liberal and the information skewed towards liberal definition, Wikipedia doesn't work that way, thank goodness. But the internet in general does. Facebook does. Facebook sees you don't like certain kinds of news. They won't show you that news. If Facebook sees that you think there's conspiracies, it's going to feed you more of those conspiracies. Because the more you click and the more you stay online, the more money they make. So what better way than to feed you what you want, not necessarily what you need or what is true. Truth has nothing to do with making money on the internet. Just so we're clear. I was going to look at something here real quick while we're waiting. Let me go back to my homepage here on YouTube. Hey, that's me. Lockpicking Lawyer is excellent. I enjoy watching his videos. Uh, I like Joe Rogan. I like his openness. Uh, Good Mythical Morning is kind of silly. Pitch Meeting is hilarious. This guy is fantastic. AFK makes the most amazing... 3D videos. And he only started this last year. He never even made a 3D video before or an animated video. And here he's got a live stream showing you how he's making the videos. And uh, his videos are fantastic. So if we go to AFK's channel and go to videos, he's got a series called Talky Orcs. And he's got these uh, Star Wars parodies that are Freaking hilarious. This Tantive 4 is genius because it it's basically from the first Star Wars movie and it replicates everything that takes place in the beginning of the movie Star Wars. And uh, the animation is fantastic. 
anyway, I highly encourage if you're ready for a laugh and you like Star Wars, this guy's fantastic. Go over there and give him at the very least a subscribe. The amount of effort he puts into this and the detail and the script writing and the voice actors that he hires. It's amazing. This guy should be at a million subscribers. I don't know why he's not. But I have digressed, haven't I? Let's go back to see how our Windows update is going, if we've uh, gotten any further here. Let me go full screen so I can see it. Yeah, this stays stuck at 7% for a long time on this massive cumulative update that just came out Tuesday. <clears throat> and it's worth it to install. All right, so I realize this takes a little while, but when that's done, we'll reboot it, we'll open it up, we'll take a look at the guts. In the meantime, while we're waiting, it's a good time for us to chit-chat. What's on your mind? Tell me. Andy Kane joins us in the chat. Welcome in, Andy. The, the idea in creating content online is you want people to click it. Everything in one way or another is clickbait when you think about it. Everybody wants you to click on their thing. And if they got to have some boisterous headline that's, you know, irresistible to click on, they're going to make more money on that. Regardless, it's nothing to do with truth. still get notifications every time a house goes up for sale in the area of Michigan, the Grand Rapids area that we're looking at, and uh, just got another house listing available there. Les Stevens says, goodbye, Carrie. I'll catch you tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Have a wonderful evening. P.S. I learned a lot today as usual. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Les. I appreciate your kind words, and I appreciate you hanging out with us. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Oh, Camera Girl has arrived. That's great because I can put Camera Girl to work. When we do the opening up here, we'll get the close-up camera and we'll get you some good shots. Speaking of the devil, there she is. <laughs> Maybe the party already started. Well, we, we were waiting. Of course we were. Go with it. Michael Dane said Windows 12 codename is Next Valley, like Windows 11 codename was Sun Valley, if anyone would like to know. Those are the rumors, yes. <laughs> Andy Kane said he paid his late fee. <laughs> Uh, you guys crack me up. This whole late fee thing wasn't my idea for anybody new here. It's something the community has come up with as their own little, kind of like a swear jar. Uh, I'm not complaining. I appreciate the contributions, regardless of the reasoning. I want people thinking, I actually charge a late fee. <laughs> not sure how I would collect on that. Uh, your credit's not good. I'm going to have to break your kneecaps in advance. Turn down the noise suppression so we can hear more background. Well, if I turn the noise suppression, um, basically OBS is the noise suppression I'm using, and it's automatic. It, I don't think I can adjust it. Uh, let me just take another look just to check. Uh, let's see. Right click, filters. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're using a setting here called RN noise which is giving us good quality, but more CPU usage. And I got plenty of CPU availability uh, resources on this are insane for how little streaming takes. 
if I change the noise suppression to the kind I can adjust, then the whole audio quality goes down the tubes. So unfortunately, I have to either, it's got to be all the way on or all the way off. So I'm going to keep it on because it just, it does more than noise suppression. It also brings my voice out a lot better. So we're going to leave it as is and we'll just have Camera Girl be closer to the microphone so you guys can hear her. Al Hedge the Patch says Windows 365 is real, and he posts a link from Microsoft.com. That's how you do it, folks. If you don't have an official source, then it's made up, as far as I'm concerned. Like Elon Musk says, <laughs> pictures or it didn't happen. <laughs> Peter Laycock, it's late over there in Scotland. He's going to bed. Thank you for joining us today, Buster, and uh, have a good night. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, I hope. And thank you again for all of your support and your kindness. You're a, a scholar and a gentleman. Sue Cool 98 Lawrence's Carrie Orchat. I have the Minis Forum NPB7 Mini. Which NVMe M.2 would be best to replace the existing Samsung 970 Evo Plus or the 980 Pro? That's a fair question. You know which one I would use? Neither. I'd get that Feng Jing two terabyte drive for $91 at Amazon. It's a bargain. Now granted, you don't get the Samsung Magician software and whatnot, but you know, unless you really want that, you see Feng Jing two terabyte. Let me go over to my Windows capture. Check this out. PCIe Gen 4, up to 7,300 megabytes per second. $91.99. There's 10% off coupon right here that brings $9.19 off of that price. You might want to buy a little heat sink for it, now that I think about it. If we go here and type in um, I'm assuming this will this will work. Um, NVMe heat sink. And you don't want anything big or you know, because it's not gonna fit. But these little cheap ones here, you get two for eleven bucks. This one might be too tall. I'm not sure. I don't I'd have to try it to see. Or if you just want to get one, you know, look for something that's got real high rating. These don't do much, but you usually don't need much. Here you go. Here's, the, here's what you go with right here. $8.99, you get two of them. And they just clip on. And I would do that even with a 970 or a 980 regardless. I've been finding especially in the mini PCs, they tend to run warmer. Uh, and there's plenty more to choose. I'm just picking some examples that are showing up here randomly. They got them in all different makes and models and flavors and colors. But you know, something giant like this isn't gonna fit. Something giant like that's not gonna fit. You want it to be lower profile. Some of them even have fans that you can plug in. You do not want that on a mini PC. Hope that answers your question and of course, those of you in the chat have suggestions, uh, please offer Sue Cool your opinion. Uh, let's see. Go back over to HDMI input. Turn camera one back on. And how are we doing here? This hasn't budged? Come on now. What's going on? Like it's stuck at downloading. Let's just restart it and see if we can't kickstart this thing. I know it does stay there for a while. Even on a high-end machine, it'll stay there for a while on that particular upgrade. Update.
James Godert says, without the heat sink, the Mini should have its own cooler and heat sink. Oh, you know what? You m Does the NPB7 have its own? I can't remember. Go back to the review I did where I open it up and just verify that. Yes, if it has its own heat sink, then don't worry about it. Just use what, what heat sink is already there. But if it does not have a heat sink, you might want to get one. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I've seen so many of these mini PCs, I, I don't know which one's which anymore. But I do know the NPB7 is one of my favorites. Starch Deck mentions to sue Lawrence that the Team Group 2 terabyte NVMe is 69 dollars Yeah, but that Team Group 2 terabyte isn't Gen 4, is it? And if it is, is it 7,300 megabytes per second read speed, like the Fengjing? I think the Fengjing is the best deal for performance. And the Team Group is probably the best deal for capacity. Like, I like the team group 4 terabyte NVMe Gen 3 drives. They're not fast. I mean, they are, but they're not, right? Depends what you're comparing it to. But the, um, the price, $185 for 4 terabytes? Yeah. Yes, please. All right, well, this is updating. Let me show you a couple other deals that are going on since we're talking about specials here. Let's go back to Amazon. And let me drop camera one here. All right. Intel's 13500i5 chip is back on sale again for $209. It's normally $247. $209.99. It comes with a heatsink. I think this is the best processor for the money from any manufacturer. I think AMD can't touch this. Quite oftentimes, the money you save on AMD, you end up spending on a more expensive motherboard or more expensive RAM. So for me personally, I am using this Intel i5 13500 as my video renderer. It's faster than any other computer I have at rendering videos. I'm just using the integrated GPU and Cyberlink Power Director. This is a great price. Pair that with a Z790 motherboard. So literally just go to Amazon and type in Z790, enter, and take your pick. If you want ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, you want DDR5 or do you want DDR4? I would use DDR5 personally. You can see you can spend a lot for a motherboard uh, five hundred ninety nine ninety nine is a very expensive motherboard. I've never paid that much for a motherboard. Well, okay, maybe once or twice for Threadripper, but uh, there's plenty to choose from here. MSI makes a motherboard called the Meg, so that's the MPG, and MSI also makes the Mag. The Meg is like you know the the the, the beast, and I think it's the single most expensive. Z790 motherboard on the market. And I don't think anybody really <laughs> needs everything it offers. Oh, the price went down. It's only $609.95 now from a list price of uh, $700. This thing is a beast. Now, this is more for, you know, an i9 series processor. Honestly, it's way overkill. Like, if the whole point of getting the 13500 is to get good value, I think there's a lot of good value to be had from ASRock, as you've witnessed me using the live mixer boards. Amazon does not sell the live mixer boards, but I use this Riptide board, and it's fantastic. 225 bucks. Pair it with that CPU. And this is uh, DDR5, right? Yeah, and this is DDR5. It's a good board. So you can have one heck of a rocket ship 
for you know well under 700 bucks but by the time you had your case power supply ram storage 700 800 bucks you got yourself a killer machine really good deal on that uh, not on this but on the processor this yeah you might be able to find this cheaper somewhere else amazon says it's 20 percent off but you know certainly at 199 or below i wouldn't hesitate it's still a good value at 225 by the way it's a better value if you find it below 200 that's what i'm trying to say and as far as like buying ddr5 i get the team ddr5 And, you know, you definitely want at least 32 gigs, 90 bucks. You could go to 64 gigs for not much more. Well, actually, if it's DDR4, it's like 125 bucks for 64 gigs. That's two sticks of uh, 32 gigs each. Here's some pretty plain memory, no heat shields. 70 bucks for 32 gigs. That's crazy cheap. And they're still selling the Team Group 4 terabyte drive. For only one eighty five ninety nine, one eighty five ninety nine, four terabytes, five year warranty. This is not a rocket ship. This is Gen three. That also means it doesn't run as hot as a Gen four or a Gen five. That's a crazy good price. So let you chew on that. If you're into that sort of thing, otherwise, if you're more interested in a mini PC where everything's already built up for you, well, for less than the price of that CPU that I said was a really good value, you could have the entire computer. But granted, it's nowhere near that kind of power or upgradability. So depending on what it is you need and what your budget is, just know your options so you can make the best decision for you. That's all I'm trying to say. Michael Dane mentions that Amazon has the 11600K for $178.95. Yeah, if you want to go back two generations, and the 14th gen will be out here probably in the fall. So obviously, the older the chip is, the cheaper it is. So, I, you know, this is a current generation. That's why it's such a big deal for 11. No, oh, sorry, for $21 more. No, I guess it's for $30 more, you can have a chip that's two years newer, has more threads, and has a higher core frequency. I don't know why Amazon doesn't sell the live mixer boards. I had to buy it from Newegg and the price went back up because they were selling the live mixer boards for the Intel line for $199. Now they're back up to like 260. And then they have it all in red for the, uh, it's like the B650 chipset for the AMD chips. It's a really unique looking motherboard if you're into the aesthetics, which I'm not really into the aesthetics except for when I make YouTube videos. None of my customers want that stuff. None of my business customers want that stuff. Let me grab a, a cold Gatorade here. And yeah, this is a massive update. It does take a while. That Core i5-13500 will go back to $247. So I don't want to hear people whining and complaining that they missed it at 209 like they did the first time it was at 209 Just saying. Now's your chance to get it. If you're not ready for it yet. Bear in mind, price is going back up when the sale is over. Now, there will be an Amazon Prime Day coming up. And who knows? They have some really good specials on Amazon Prime Day. So, you know, if you're not ready to buy yet, could be something better being offered on Amazon Prime Day. What's going on, camera girl? I saved them for you. Thank you. Oh, 
please. I, it was really tempting for me to do those dishes. And I thought, I didn't want to take that pleasure away from you that you get from doing dishes. It's just the kind of thoughtful guy I am. Did you see the, what arrived from Amazon there for you, sitting on the stove? <laughs> Amazon has these little clip-on, uh, like, you put your dipping sauce. What are they? Plate clips? Plate clips. Let's see if I can find them on Amazon. If you like to dip your food into sauce, it's a little clip-on bowl. Oh yeah, here they are. It's a dip clip. That's what it's called. I've been called that. Wait a minute. Let's see. Let me share this page. This is I thought I was I stumbled into this the other day. Just kind of squirreling around on on the old YouTube's. Found these. I mean, they're cheap. Ten bucks. And it just is a, clips onto the side of your plate. And of course, you can clip on a couple if you want different sauces. Like I could have a medium and a mild hot sauce. Here in the picture, they've got what looks like mustard and marinara. What's the other thing there? Jalapenos? I guess you could put seasoning in there too. Come on. Why did I think of that? It's a brilliant idea. That's what I said when I saw that. That I, I should have invented that. It's a dip serving set for spice, tomato sauce, salt, veggie, vinegar, ketchup, chips. Chip clips, holders, cup, paper, plate, holder, condiment, cups, dipping. Yeah. That's, all in one. that's just called search engine optimization. You get eight of them. So they're just, what, $1.20 a piece or something? That's cool. I couldn't resist. Anyway, I just, that was fun. Nothing to do with the Chewy computer, but... Yeah, how is that? So far, so good. Yeah. I have not uh, opened it up yet to see what its insides look like, though. I will as soon as the updates are done. I mean, the outside... I thought for, this was the Oreo filling. You know what? That is... It doesn't taste like... Than doesn't yeah. taste like Oreo filling. It Sometimes when the, you hear the phone beep, it's one of the cameras around Studio B. And um, sometimes if we have a windy day and the trees move or the shadows move of the trees, the camera thinks that's motion. And these cameras, they have a setting to detect human. Yeah, so you don't get the false alerts. But sometimes we get raccoons and stray cats. And I want to know. I want to see them. Babar says it's expected Amazon Prime Day 2023 is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday, July 11th and 12th. Michael Mariello says, good evening, everyone. Must start the barbecue. That's from Mike in the Bronx. Channel Zero, have you alerted everybody to the problem with gigabyte boards? It's not really a problem. So this is, once again, where the internet takes a little bit of information and it turns into something bigger than what it really is. It's a potential problem. Um, and for right now, like, I don't see any updates for the gigabyte boards I have in regards to that. But yes, we've already talked about it previously um, when it was new news a couple days ago.
Doman 2000 said Microsoft releases a fully updated ISO image for Windows 11 22H2 and Windows 10 22H2. Well, thank you for letting me know. I will update my install media. Anything that reduces time and updates, I'm all about that. Chris Johnson mentions the Azorus, the Aorus Gigabyte Z590 had a BIOS update. Yeah, so the older boards, like this is a socket 1200 board. Is it socket 12? No, that's socket 1151, isn't it? That's a Gen 9. And my clients who all have Gigabyte boards, they're all Gen 9. So far, there's been no updates for any of us in that regard. But it's only a potential problem. It's not... It's not yet a real problem, and it may never, ever be a real problem. So it's the potential for a problem. And if that changes to becoming a real problem, I'll be the first to let you know. However, let's not freak out over what's possible, because so far, there's been no indication that this back door, if you will, has ever been utilized for bad. And honestly, it would have to be individualized to each motherboard. But regardless of that, it's a potential problem. And any reputable person on YouTube who talks about it, if you listen to the words they speak, they will say it's a potential problem. That's very different from a problem. So we're clear. It's a very important word in the sentence that should not be left out if you're going to propagate that information to other people. Please do so properly. Please. Patrick Grusa said, my sister called me with a PC problem and she's going to pay me with a goulash dinner. So I got to go enjoy life as much as you can. Hey, right on. And what's better than goulash other than free goulash? I don't even know what goulash is. <laughs> you don't want to know. I probably don't. If it's a bunch of foods mixed together and they're not separated. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah, no thank you. Channel Zero says, I'm only worried about making sure every owner updates their BIOS as soon as possible. See, it's unnecessary. Updating their BIOS as soon as possible when there is no threat is it's sort of like fear-mongering. So... You're making a big deal out of nothing. There is no BIOS to update to for a lot of older Gigabyte boards. And Gigabyte has to pay their developers that they have to go through testing. And I want you to understand that I hope you will be held accountable if anybody updates their BIOS because you suggested it when they were not having any computer problems. I hope you are willing to help them solve any computer problems they have as a result of taking your advice. Because if you're not, please stop. The best of intentions can cause the biggest problems. And since this is only a potential issue, it's nothing to worry about. It, you don't have to put any urgency behind this. Absolutely not. You know what they say, no good deed goes unpunished. Go Live said, we need more cooking with Carrie recipes. Oh, we're going to step it up. We'll... Oh, we're going to step it up. Yeah. We're going to do uh, cooking with Camera Girl. Because she eats healthy. Low carb, sugar free, vegan, and vegan. vegan. The opposite of me. And so she develops a lot of her own low carb, sugar free, vegan alternatives to common recipes. She's got substitutes for things where she can pretty much almost every pretty much recreate any recipe to make it low carb, sugar free, keto friendly. No. Not keto. But it's keto friendly. It's not keto. There's no sugar. So it's high fat. Well, I don't think it has to be high fat. Okay. Well, you know more about it than I do. Steve Mercure says, cooking with Camera Girl, I'm in. Have I tried any of it? Uh, yes. You're yes. once in a while. 
can carry to try something. It's rare, but when it does happen, I'm thrilled. She <laughs> laughs at the expression on my face. Like one time he ate an espresso, a chocolate covered espresso bean, and that was on him. He let's, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> let's not talk about this. He doesn't even like coffee. I don't like coffee, but she was just gushing about how good these sugar-free chocolate-covered espresso beans were. So I thought I'll try one, and you know she'll be proud of me for stepping outside of my box. Yeah, but it's coffee. You don't like coffee. And I couldn't get the taste out of my mouth for like four or five hours. It was just disgusting. And then she's like, "Well, you're an idiot." I'm like, "Well, I thought you were going to pat me on the back and say, you know, add a boy, good trying." She goes, "No, you knew you weren't going to like it. What? What are you? I didn't realize you were that stupid." Well, that was the exact opposite of what I was going for. So. No, I was laughing. wants to know if a storm comes if a storm comes through with lightning happening, is it safe to stay logged into a desktop computer? If lightning hits near you, then it's not safe. If lightning does not hit near you, then it's perfectly fine. How much of a gambler are you? One of the things I like about having a laptop or a cell phone is you can just, you know, during a storm, shut the equipment down. Of course, I'm risking the modem, I suppose, and the router at that point, but at least I'm not risking the expensive computer. But running on battery, then... I can be in a storm and still be online and not have to worry about that stuff. Sarge Tech said falafel salad is wonderful. I don't know. It's got the word awful right in it. Easy Otter wants to know, does she cook with tofu? Yes. She enjoys her sponges. Tofu waffles. Tofu waffles are her favorite. Some of you are remarking in the chat room the things I said 45 minutes ago. So maybe 45 minutes from now, you'll get to hear this part for me to tell you you're 45 minutes behind. That's the downside of me putting the DVR mode on. So we have viewers commenting to things that we've long since moved on from. Richard Cullen gives us a laughing smiley. This is a big update. It's, it does take a while. Uh, one of the things I've been doing lately is updating these computers off camera, but then you miss the entire out of box experience. So one way or the other, I'm paying the price by, you know, saving time by doing this, but then you guys don't know what was the setup like out of the box. And because I see so many of these, I often can't remember. So I try to do a little each time of one way and then the other way and that way I you never know what's coming it's always different Doman 2000 said that PC needs a hard kick Tricky Ricky wants me to cook some more homemade pizzas yeah, yeah twist my arm we make a uh, a low carb vegan pizza for cam girl that uses cashew mozzarella zero carb tortillas little tiny ones about yay big we use a tomatoes canned tomatoes uh, not sauce not tomato. it's not tomato crushed sauce tomato. and it's not puree it's crushed. it's crushed tomatoes and you read the can to check to see how much sugar you want as low sugar as possible and then what else do we put on there? Or if I could find vegan bacon. Oh, vegan bacon. Satan? Satan? Satan is vegan bacon. That's what it's called. It's one version. Satan. Satan? Tomato, tomato. A lot of the vegan products are... Ron Tomey wants to know if this update would have gone any faster if Uncle Kerry's Windows 10 optimizer was installed first. Not likely. This is a very big update. And every once in a while, Microsoft has these 
what are called cumulative updates. Sometimes the cumulative updates don't take so long, and other times they do. It just kind of varies from, from update release to update release. So this is going to take a while. Even if you had a latest and greatest, you know, Gen 13, 13900 KS, it's still going to take a while. Um, not this long necessarily, but much longer than what you were probably accustomed to with most updates. This is a serious update. Michael Dane mentioned it took his laptop almost 90 minutes to install. It, it shouldn't take that long. It shouldn't take 90 minutes, but it could take 20 minutes. Michael says his laptop's a 12th generation i7, and it took it that long. That update released today, uh, Microsoft releases the updates every second Tuesday of every month. So Tuesday was when this update was released. And my internet is slow, as Ron Varnish mentions in the chat room. That's not helping anything, right? Because it takes me longer to even just download the update. But uh, once it's out of the way, we can move forward. In the meantime, we should take advantage of this by asking questions, talking to each other. What's on your mind? Arnold wants to know why the move from Samsung to Beijing NVMe. Money. It's about the money. If customers want the Samsung drive, if we're building a higher-end machine, we still use the Samsung drives. Customers want best value for the dollar. And I'm gonna back up here and I'm gonna say, I'm not selling the Fanjing drives to any of my customers. At this point right now, they're in, they're in a mode that I, that, where I'm evaluating whether or not I can recommend these within my business. So what I've done is, when I need to do something here on camera, if I wanna add two terabytes of storage into a machine, I don't need the Samsung. I want something cheap. And the fact that, that drive is so inexpensive, and just shop around. Go to Newegg and look at their four, generation four, two terabyte drives. They don't have anything at Newegg even close to that price. It's a significant savings. It's a fast drive. Is the drive any good over time? I don't know. How do I find out? I've got to buy some. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll use them every day, you know, in everyday use. I'll use them like in the RAID controller card I got. Experimentation, I need four of them just for that. Um, on these uh, live mixer builds, they're, they're, the whole build is an experiment. So that fits right in with it while keeping the price down. Please remember the scale of my operation. I think a lot of you are stuck thinking of the world the way you see it, not the way a business runs. For me to evaluate these drives, I really need about a dozen of them. And I need to use them in different environments. And you know, if there's somebody I, that I, that's local, that's a friend of mine, I'll say, hey, do you want a free drive? But in exchange, you have to understand the risks and you have to report back to me any problems. And so one of the live mixer boards is going to um, somebody I know with the Fengjing drive. And if he has any problems with it, he's not a computer guy. Bring it back to me so I can evaluate what's going on. If we go a year, year and a half without any problems, or if we have a problem but Fengjing is quick to resolve it for us, why spend money you don't have to spend? On the other hand, if if the customer is like, look, I, I'm not, I don't care about saving money. I care about having the best. Then I put the Samsung drives in it. So I still use the Samsung drives. All right. Hallelujah. I think we have finished our updates. And just because I am a glutton for punishment, I'm going to just check it one more time and let's see if it comes up and says there's no updates available. Uh, camera girl, are you going to be ready for some close-up camera work? Yeah. Oh, we still have... These updates won't take very long. Let me grab... Um, have the HDMI cable still plugged into the overhead. 
You're going to need this for close up camera here. Get this other overhead out of the way. Okay. Amazon beats Newegg on price. Well, not always. I found better deals on Amazon and I found better deals on Newegg. Like that live mixer board isn't available on Amazon and the Feng Zhang drive isn't available on Newegg. Sometimes B&H Photo outdoes them both. I ended up getting the NZXT H7 RGB era flow case out of stock. Out of stock. B&H Photo said we have it in stock. Same price. I ordered it from B&H. Amazon said, we'll get it to you by the end of June. So unfortunately, there's not just one store that we can visit that has everything we want and at great prices. Even Costco, you and I both know, if you shop at Costco, sometimes you're cheaper prices at Walmart for some of the stuff Costco sells. Download and install all. Okay. And then after this next reboot, I'm not going back into Windows Update. We're going to open this thing up and take a look at its guts. Michael Dane says, all that in the update did not install. I think it did. That's why it's failing. So Windows 11 update screen sometimes it'll say that there's an update it's not working and the retry and you hit retry and nothing happens you can't make it go away if that ever happens it'll go away on its own within 24 hours so this whole idea of googling and going into your registry and turning off services so you can delete files it's all a big waste of time it's just going to be stuck in a loop we're just going to go around in circles and that's likely because it's already been done so it'll fail because it's already been done. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to shut this down and we're going to open it up. So uh, camera girl, would you mind uh, getting to work? Something vegan. It'll cost me something vegan. Yeah. Uh, I have a tomato on the counter. Have an avocado and get a deal. An avocado? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. So I've got this turned off. I'm going to pull power. Ready. You're ready? No. All right. Uh, let me turn on close-up camera. All right, come on over. So here's the bottom of the unit. Kind of weird, isn't it? I don't know what this is for. And... Yeah, but it, it, doesn't, it, come it doesn't come with anything, so I'm not sure. I'm going to need my little screwdrivers. I'm predicting. This is my very first time opening this, so uh, be gentle. warm I don't know why that one's not coming out maybe that's what you do oh these little rubber feet come off too so just be mindful of that so you don't lose them uh, let's see let me just grab a straight edge driver and stick it in here I think that's what that's for. Mm. All right, here's the inside. There's the guts. You got the guts. All right, let's see. What are these for? Oh, that's probably the screws that hold the heat sink down. There's our M2 drive. This is a place to hold a two and a half inch drive, but there's nowhere to plug in a two and a half inch drive. 
The arrow indicates it points to the front of the unit. So that's, if we take this out, we have to know how to put it back in. How do we take that out? It looks like there's a screw way down in there. So. You will need a long and narrow driver to reach that. Assuming these screws are in each corner are for this top piece here. One. Two. Three, these are different screws. The thread is different than the case screws. So I want to make sure I'm putting the right screws back. Things may not go back together smoothly if you don't use the same screws. Now I think this should just lift, unless I'm missing something. Oh, you know what? Is that all one piece? I might have to unplug everything. I don't know. You open this up. I mean, I don't think there's any reason... You can let that drop on the floor if you want. I don't think there'd be any reason to take it any further apart. It looks like the RAM is soldered in, and I'll bet you our Wi-Fi is underneath our M.2 drive here. Again, that's going to be a different screw from all the others. It's much, much shorter. So there's our air disk. Yeah, there's our Wi-Fi. We can upgrade the Wi-Fi. Uh, so it appears RAM is, in fact, soldered in. Now, how do we open this? There must be a way. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out if this top piece and, the, and this molding are all one, or if this insert comes out. I would think that that would come out. Um, missing a screw from somewhere? If I had to guess, and let's face it, I have to guess. Hmm. Just can't tell if this insert comes out away or if it's all this black piece, this entire black piece comes off. I can hear it wanting to separate. And there is a sticker here so they can tell if you've opened it. So my guess is this whole top piece comes off, maybe? I don't want to use too much force because I don't want to break it, obviously.
I see, if you look down in there, I see these little black plastic pieces that are going down. I'm assuming they're clips. Well, apparently they don't want you to take it any further apart than this. Because at this point you have to study do a little reverse engineering that's not obvious. Feels like top and bottom would separate, but they shouldn't be this difficult unless there's a miss there's a screw somewhere I'm missing. You'll see there's two holes here and here, and those line up with the lid here. What that piece is for? It's got like a little spring action on it. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm getting the sense that that this center and this outside are all one piece. I think they're molded together. I don't see a seam. If I pull on the edge, it pulls the inside as well. So I think, I think, I think I'm on the right path with separating it this way. Because I do hear something clicking. You hear it? Doesn't do it on the sides, but it does offer that licking the front and the back of the white lid. Hmm. I'm afraid of breaking it. Definitely sounds like it wants to open. And I'm feeling it right here. I'm feeling something clipping, clicking, or a clip, and also one right about here. But it's not enough to get these separated. So I don't think I'm going to open this any further because it's possible there's still another screw somewhere that I'm missing. Feels really tight in the corners. All right. Well, RAM is soldered on, just so you know. And with a processor like this, you're going to be limited, even if you could put RAM in it it'd be very limited because it's an N100 processor. So it's, it's going to be restricted by Intel. But I do like that you can upgrade the, this is a Wi-Fi 6. You could put Wi-Fi 7 in there when it becomes available if you wanted to. And you can see from the two notches, that's a SATA SSD. And this will be running about 550 on the reads and writes. All right, I guess I'm gonna put it back together. It seems pretty obvious to me that if you're somebody who likes to tinker, do not buy this one. Just know this isn't for you. If you're somebody that wants to be able to buy a little computer like this for 200 bucks, take it out of the box and start using it, this is who this is built for, okay? And that's your only upgrade right there.
Wi-Fi and storage. Now, if I was going to upgrade the storage on a little $200 box, I would do it externally via USB or network attached storage via the network. I would not cram it in here because as we talked about yesterday and explored how hot this can get when you're using um, multiple drives or other devices that generate heat. So we'll put this back together. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I got to put the other screws in first. I, I, I don't know that they're doing much, but uh, we'll put them back anyway. I've confused myself. Yeah, let me put these in. Is that round circle the CMOS battery? No. They probably have this case design in other mini PCs where that is designed for a battery, but on this model, it is not utilized. Battery is located somewhere else. Probably, if it's not under this, then it's on the other side. The idea being that they can make multiple models of varying CPUs, RAM, and storage without having to design the case individually for each variation. You just design one case, and then you utilize the features of that case unique to that build. It saves inventory cost, manufacturing cost, and it means it saves you, the consumer, money since you're able to... Uh, utilize the same case design for different models, right? Because this also can hold a two and a half inch drive, even though there's no place to plug in a two and a half inch drive. So that tells you they're also using this case on many PCs that do support the two and a half inch drive. Following me? I come back to that one in a minute, that's being stubborn. So everybody's in but this guy. Okay, so there's our up arrow and there's our up arrow. So those two will align. Let's push that down. That one does not want to go in for some reason. Get that one back out. Try a different one. Thanks. Got a runner. Try it over here. Hmm, that one just seems like it's. Might have, I might have broken it when I took it apart there. It won't tighten down. Yeah, these don't turn very much before they tighten. That one just keeps turning. It won't tighten down. Put back on there. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm, I might have might have caused a little harm there. So yeah. If it were me, if I were to buy this, you know, sub $200 box, I would have no reason to open this and I would not encourage you to open it either. 
I'd say if you want more storage, just get USB storage. You don't want that added heat in the box anyway. You cannot upgrade the RAM. It is soldered in. All right, let's plug the internet back into it here. And my HDMI cable, we'll plug that back in over here. Turn that back on. All right, I'm going to go back over to the HDMI input. We'll make sure this thing is booting. And you're clear, camera girl. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have any other questions for me? We're just past the two hour mark, which seems like a good place to stop. Spencer M has become a new member. Right on, Spencer. Welcome into our tech club. Shamim says, I changed the liquid cooler of my PC yesterday. And right now I'm turning on my PC. It turns on the monitor, but doesn't get any signal. Any tips? Remember when I mentioned why I don't recommend changing thermal compound? Because it's always oh, easy, and then it, something happens, and you end up taking a computer that was working just fine, and you end up breaking it. I'm not suggesting that's the case here, but this is an example of why I suggest you guys don't do unnecessary work. But um, usually when a computer is not posting, it's in indicating that either the RAM is not fully seated or you've not plugged the little 12-pin CPU power connector back on or it's not fully seated or the big 24-pin motherboard power connector is not fully seated or you've got something plugged in USB that's conflicting. So anything USB other than a keyboard or a mouse should be unplugged. Paul Ho says the web page on the Chewy computer shows it splits. The white comes apart from the black. Yeah, that's what it looked like it wanted to do, but uh, it's not easy, and I'm afraid of breaking it. And there's no, re there's nothing we can do. Like, even if I were to open that, there's nothing user serviceable beyond that. Everything else is soldered in. So why bother? John Paul Bacon said, if Camera Girl's willing, the Hormel turkey pepperoni is very good, but it's not vegan. Last I checked, no. turkeys aren't plants. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> Paul O'Brien contributes two euro. He says, good night. I see a number of people checking out right now. So I guess this is probably a, a good place to end. Shamim says, the RAM is okay. I would still take the RAM out remove the RAM and only put in one RAM module. I would unplug and replug the main motherboard power connector and I would double check the fitting of the 12 of the um, 12 volt EPS power connector up by the CPU that little four pin or eight pin connector. Also make sure if you've got a graphics card that you remember to plug power back into your graphics card. Uh, 
All right, guys, I think that might wrap it up for today's video. If you're interested in purchasing one of these Chewy boxes, please set your expectations to being reasonable. It's not upgradable, okay? Just let's chalk it up as not upgradable. It'll be a great home theater streaming box. It would be a great everyday use to browse the internet, um, pay bills online, check your email. Not really good for gaming, nor would any computer at $200 be good for gaming, quite frankly. I think you're getting a lot of a value for the money. And if you want to see how some games run on this, Rob Tech, his YouTube channel, recently did all of those benchmarks. So I'm not going to repeat what other people have already done. But if we type in, um, and I'm going to show you how you can find some other reviews on this. If I go to my uh, YouTube page here and share the screen with you. And we'll go up here and we'll type in Lark Box X. And we see this is a year ago. This is a different Lark Box X because this is a Ryzen 7, which is obviously not what we have. ETA Prime, this is also a year ago. This is also the Ryzen 7. It's frustrating when manufacturers keep carrying over the same product name when the product is completely different. Two days ago, so now, now we're on the same page, Rob Tech did his review, and in his review, you'll see he runs some games, just in case you're curious. Some older games are probably going to run fine on this, but at low resolutions anyway. So be sure, if you're not subscribed to Rob Tech, do so if you want more in-depth benchmarks on the mini PCs. I'll let him do that work. And Lawn.tv, apparently. No, that's the Ryzen one. So pay attention to when the videos were published. This says a year ago, a year ago. So this is a very different... And see, they're using the same case, and who knows, maybe that one uses a 2.5-inch drive. That's two years ago, two years ago. Anyway, so just when you're watching these videos or you're seeing any content online, please pay attention to when the content was published. And especially when a product manufacturer uses the same product name year after year after year, but the product keeps changing, make sure you're watching the review for the right thing. And it's clearly, they've even confused themselves, you know, looking at the Amazon page. This guy's got a great sense of humor. He's uh, from Australia. I think if you watch his videos and my videos side by side on the same product, that'll give you a very nice thorough review from the practical, which is what I look at, to the analytical, which is what he does. Chris Smith says, I looked at the mini PC for tomorrow's show. It looks great to me. Should be a great show. Yes, uh, the Minis Forum NAD9 is a bare bones that I ordered from Minis Forum that we have to put our own RAM storage and operating system on. It is a high-end desktop. It is the exact opposite of this, and it's, it's about four times more money than that. Jeremy says, I've been binge-watching binge watching your videos for a week straight now. Oh, so you got about a week's worth of videos in there. <laughs> My videos are very long. That's cool. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Tim Teal says, I've got a quick question. I got a computer where Chrome does not open in regular mode. I've uninstalled, restarted in real time. It still won't open. I restarted in safe mode and Chrome works. Yeah, I have no idea, but if anybody's got any tips for Tim, please let him know. Trevor Dunn said on Amazon, it says it has two dual memory slots and can be upgraded to 64 gigs. The Intel N100 cannot be upgraded to 64 gigs. Uh, if we look at the specifications that Intel states, if we go back to, uh, let's go back to where we were. Looks like they've included the 
Ryzen 7 specifications. And there is a Ryzen 7 version of the Lockbox X that apparently they came out last year. But if we type in um, N100 specs, It's uh, four cores with four threads. Now, it's funny. It says the max turbo frequency is 3.4, but Chewy's got it to 4.1. Six watts TDP. It's very low power. Uh, maximum memory size, 16 gigs. That's the most an N100 processor can see. So who do you want to believe? The seller who wrote up their own description on Amazon? or the manufacturer who makes the chip. Your choice. But I think, I think the answer is pretty obvious here over which one is accurate. And that's an easy way to tell. You don't have to guess. You've got Google. And you can go right to the source, right to the manufacturer. Encouraging you to teach yourself to fish. Alamar wants to know any info on the TP-Link router, the Wi-Fi 7 router. I've been using it, it's been about a week. It's been awesome. I, I really like it. If you can afford it, I highly recommend it. I feel like Ferris Bueller. Uh, I'm liking it. John Williams says, thanks for the live stream. Have a good night, Carrie and camera girl. Joe Carander saying good night. Sarge Tech said, hey, this was a fun one. Thank you, Uncle Carrie and Mara Alina, mistress of the camera. Did you know you're the mistress of the camera? Sue Cole contributes $20 via Super Chat. It says, thanks for your help. Now I'm thinking about a Cronus for cloning drives. Do keep in mind that when you buy a drive, a lot of times it comes with a free copy of a Cronus that only works with that drive for the purpose of cloning. Almost every drive manufacturer allows a free copy of a Cronus that's tailored to their brand of drive and only works with their brand of drive. And it's free. The only manufacturer I think that doesn't do it is Samsung because they have a migration tool in the Samsung Magician, so they do it themselves. So you may need to purchase, you may not need to purchase a Cronus if all you're trying to do is clone. Because a Cronus is so much more than that. So if you're looking for a tool that you can make regular backups so that your data is always protected, then absolutely the Cronus is the right choice. But if all you're going to do is use it once to clone a drive, if you look at the drive manufacturer like uh, Sabrent, Let's say you bought a Sabrent drive, okay? Let's just off the top of my head. And we go over to the Windows Capture again. Let's go back. I think it's like uh, www.sabrent.com forward slash Acronis, maybe? Yeah. So it's a version of Acronis that only works with Sabrent drives, meaning if you're doing a clone, one of the drives, either the source or the target, must be a Sabrent drive. And it doesn't have any of the backup features. It's just for cloning, I believe, I think. And I think Western Digital offers this. I think Seagate offers this. I, I think uh, everybody Nearly every, I don't think Feng Zheng does, but like all the big names all offer a free version of Acronis for the purpose of cloning. The only one that doesn't, as far as I know, is Samsung because they have a data migration tool already built into the Samsung Magician software. And thank you for your contribution.
Winter Mute provides a link to a very good, reputable news site for tech news called bleepingcomputer.com. And he says, Tim, this may be your issue. There you go. Go Live wants to know if I have any builds being ordered or planned. Uh, I have a 10900 build that'll be coming up uh, next week or the week after. And then I'll have the follow-ups on the repair and the live mixer builds now that they're all, well, when they get buttoned up, I'll give you sort of the, you know, here it is. Here's what it looks like when it's all cable managed and buttoned up. Had to wait on some Wi-Fi cards that needed to go in there. I also got the extension cable and the RGB fan that I needed for the cube build so I can finish that one up off camera. But then once it's finished, I'll show you the final. You know, here's what it looks like when it's all put, put together properly. And uh, because the 13500 chip went back on sale, I ordered one of the chips, but I haven't ordered a motherboard yet. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I really, really like the 13500. It is my favorite chip of choice. It is screamingly fast. The stock cooler is quiet. It never overheats with the stock cooler. So I'm saving $65 by not having to buy a Scythe Mugen 5. I'm saving $40, nearly $40, with that $209 price instead of its normal $248, $247 and change. And so that alone is $100 savings. So I'm just looking for the right motherboard in no hurry. I just thought I'd like to have it in inventory and that'll be a future build. I've had people asking me about builds and it really, I think it's unrealistic to talk to me about what you're going to do someday. Hey, Carrie, what would a price be for a gaming PC that can do this and that? Because I'm going to order one. My question to you is, when do you plan on ordering it? And they go, oh, August, October? Okay, please don't waste my time. And I mean that sincerely. This market fluctuates daily. Parts go out of inventory. We get part shortages. Parts depreciate quickly. What is a hot product today may be not so desirable tomorrow. It's really hard to know. We're moving very, very quickly in this industry. When you have the money in your hand and you are ready to order, that is when you ask the question, what can I get? Because anything you asked me three months earlier likely isn't going to apply three months later. And all you did was waste my time. And there's no point in that. There's no point in doing all the research and, and everything that's required to get you a quote when you have no intention of making the purchase for months. The quote is worthless. It's completely worthless because I guarantee that writing that same quote in three months' time will be potentially different components and absolutely a different price. So, you know, take the pandemic when that happened. Hearts dried up like crazy. And, you know, web cameras were selling off the shelf. Nobody could have predicted the price of web cameras would go through the roof. And graphics card shortages and, you know, oh my gosh. Who knows what tomorrow holds? So when you're ready to purchase, that's the time to reach out and start getting your quotes. We can help each other by just following that one simple consideration. And it really does, it does you a favor by not leading you on to believe the information is, uh, is going to be pertaining in, in three months' time, that it that the prices are going to be the same, the parts are going to be the same. Of course they're not. Look at how much SSD prices and RAM prices have fallen in the last three months. So Ron Toomey said, let Crystal Dismart do its thing. Uh, it's just a SATA drive. They all perform the same. You're going to get 550 thereabouts. Um, Rob Tech runs Crystal Dismark in his video because I just scrolled through it and I just saw it. <laughs> so uh, if you want those analytics, uh, I think there's no sense doing what he's already done. But it's going to be 
right in, you know, peak at 550. And that's true of all SATA drives. All SATA SSDs, I should say. At least new ones. SATA 3 SSDs all basically run somewhere between 520 to 550 on the reads on the right. Pat Kennedy says, great show as usual. Hey, right on. Thank you, Pat. Shane Perkins wants to get viruses and says, I'm going to st stop the automatic updates. Hey, good for you. Uh, it was nice knowing your identity. I'm not going to get that vaccine. Instead, I'm going to get the virus. Okay. Self-harm. I don't know what that's in reference to. I just, I hate it when I hear people turning off updates. But if you're having a problem as a result of an update and the idea is that you're just going to pause the updates till an update to the update comes out, okay, as long as you're not permanently doing it, we're fine. Jeremy says, your tough love way of teaching really hits home with me, sir. Thank you so much. One of my favorite quotes is, uh, I think it was Wayne Dyer, who said, I want to thank all the people in my life who told me no. It's because of them I did it myself. So I want to encourage you to be self-reliant, and I want to show you this stuff is very easy. And I want to... I, I want you to fulfill, uh, to feel the fulfillment that one receives when you accomplish a task. Um, it's a gift. So sometimes people can't be bothered. They're lazy or they have a bad attitude. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm not a babysitter. So I'm hoping people come here because they want to learn and they want to better themselves. But at the end of the day, it's your own punishment and it's your own reward. If you choose to make an attempt to try it yourself, the reward you're going to get for that is beyond any video I could make, and it's beyond any gift anybody can give you. The reward mentally with the dopamine release, or the, the feeling of having accomplished something, it, it can pull people out of depression, it pulls people out of boredom, and it even leads people into an entirely new career. I've had so many emails from people saying that they had so much fun doing it, that they helped some friends, and the next thing you know, They've changed careers and now they're working as a computer technician all because of my videos. And, you know, it's a bit cliche to say it, but I mean, if I get one email from one person somewhere in the world that says that, it's all worthwhile, right? But when I have people that essentially, you know, they've got a bad attitude or they can't be bothered, I'm not their slave. You know, I, I find that offensive. Like, get off your butt and do it, you know? But I also want to encourage people and say, look, if you run into any difficulties, come on in, you know, use your smartphone if your computer's not working. I'm live practically every day. And the community and myself will do our best to help you. And we will help you. And you will learn from it. And the harder that lesson is, the bigger the reward is, the, the dopamine and the, the feeling of accomplishment. It, it's, it's like a double or triple hit. It's worth it, and it's something I can't give to you. You have to give it to yourself. I can show you how to do it, but I can't make you get off your butt and do it. And if you're not interested, I can't make you interested, and I'm not interested in attempting to make you interested. I'm not your psychologist. I am not your life coach. But if you have the right attitude where you're interested and you want to be able to do it on your own, then you've come to the right place. And... Don't worry about what ifs. Forget about the what ifs. Follow the instructions I give. If I tell you to unplug the computer and don't work on a computer with the power plugged in, even if it's off, and you choose not to follow my steps and you break your computer because you listen to somebody else, I don't want to hear about it. Go complain to them. If you follow my steps and something happened that doesn't make any sense, come into the chat. Don't freak out. Let us know what happened. We'll do our best to get you straightened out 
It's really no big deal. I hate the speculation and I hate the fear. What happens if this happens? What if I do if that happens? Well, what will you do if it doesn't happen? Why not think the other way? Why are you thinking so negatively? What if you do it and it just works and everything's way better and you realize just how capable you are? What about that? Why don't you think that way? Why is it all got to be negative? Then when the reality sets in that everything went smoothly, it's going to embolden you, empower you. And if things go poorly, you know you've got a place to come for help when you have an actual real problem in reality. We can help you with it. But if the problem's in your own mind, none of us can help you with that. That's, there's a doctor, you know, might be, can give you a prescription. <laughs> so I don't really think of it as tough love. I think of it as common sense and logic. And I know you can do this. I can't make you interested. And, uh, it's your own reward and it's your own consequence. So it doesn't really impact me whether you do it or you don't. But once you've done it and you get that dopamine release, that feeling that nobody can give it to you, I can't explain it here. It's something you feel. What I will tell you is 99,999 times out of 100,000 times, you're going to want to feel that again. And so the education, the pursuit of, of, you know, getting these different experiences becomes exciting and your confidence grows. And like I said, it washes away depression or self-loathing. It washes away negative thoughts, knowing no matter what happens, we can fix it. Instead of this wondering, what if I did this and what if I did that, but you actually don't do anything, that drives me crazy. Do something. <laughs> I'd love one of those stands you have your computer on. Are you referring to this stand here? This is just from Costco. Costco sells these. 60, 70 bucks. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me for today. Thank you to the folks at Chewy for sending us this unit for evaluation. It seems like a, a great little box for 200 bucks. It's nothing you're going to be upgrading, okay? Uh, if you're using it for streaming, you're using it for light work, like, you know, Word documents, Excel documents, email, paying bills, browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, streaming Netflix or Plex. It's right up your alley. If you want something more than that, open your wallet. They make other models that have more power. You get what you pay for. If you want extra, it costs extra. So have reasonable expectations on your purchase. If you buy from Amazon, you have 30-day return policy at Amazon. You can send it back if you don't like it. You can send it back just because you changed your mind within 30 days. There's no risk to you at all. So if you do decide to buy one of these, I'd love to hear your experience with it. Let us know. Leave a comment in the video comments below this video. And uh, tell us if you bought one, why? If you're not buying one, why? And I think you can't complain at the $200 price point. You're getting a lot of computer for that amount of money. Was there a coupon code also? Uh, no, I think these have had coupon codes before. Like $20 off. I'm pretty sure I've seen that. But regardless, um, $199. Yes, the Amazon listing is a mixture of the old model and the new model. It's not correct. But this video has all the correct information in it, so you should know what to expect. It looks like they have seven left in stock over at Amazon. And it looks like it takes about a week to arrive. Oh, it says fastest delivery tomorrow. Oh, maybe they can deliver it overnight, too. Interesting. I'm not signed into my Amazon account, so sometimes the... Faster delivery is offered to Prime customers only. So I'm seeing just the default uh, Amazon page for non-Prime customers. All right. Thank you, Camera Girl, for the thumbnail and the close-ups. And thanks to Chewy. Thanks to my friends in blue for keeping it civil in the chat room. Sometimes we get troublemakers popping in there. I didn't see any today. 
So either the, the blue team has done a great job or we just didn't have any troublemakers. Either way, I appreciate it. Thanks to all my members, of course, for supporting the channel. Thanks to everybody new. I hope you'll stick around and become a part of our community. We'd love to have you. And a shout out one more time to all of the contributors. That includes Sue Cool 98 Lawrence, Paul O'Brien, Oystein with the zero, Mike Visions, Paul O'Brien, you from Paul O'Brien, our friend Buster, Frankie B, and a welcome to membership to Spencer M. So Spencer, remember every Monday at one o'clock are videos only for members. And you can go back and see all the videos that you've missed that aired on Mondays now that you're a member. You can go back and look at those. Thank you again for watching. I will see you all again tomorrow live, 1 p.m. Pacific time, as we take a look at the minis forum, Mad9. And Shamim Kajveres contributes 100 Swedish kroner. He says, I feel so happy being a member of this community. People are very kind. Amazing how I got support instantly. You are all incredible. Well, you rock, Shamim, and thank you for supporting the channel and for being a part of this amazing community. Remember, it's amazing because you're a part of it. So thank you. I will see you all again tomorrow at one o'clock. And until next time, bye for now. Okay, now I have to find an outro to play. All right, we'll do this one.